the very best of Heinrich Klassen at halftime between Hyderabad and Bangalore. This is Visit Sadi presents ESPN Cricket Pro T20 timeout. A hundred to savor, an innings to savor for Klassen, who becomes the seventh centurion of this year's tournament. The second from the Sunrisers, 104 of 51. And the rest of the Sunrisers put together got 66 of 69. So it tells you that uh, they could have got more, but it's still an above par score with what this ground has shown us. Let's ask those questions of Tom Moody at halftime on Visit Saudi Presents here. Spain Rick and Footy 20 timeout. Uh, very good score, uh, you think, Tom, but let me start with whether it's a par score or an above par score, 186. I, I think it's an above par score. Um, uh, it's obvious that Clarkson has played uh, uh, one of the better knocks of, of the IPL. Uh, we've had a, a few of them. But that's an outstanding hundred mm. under the circumstances with a, with a team that's struggling. He's been the one consistent yeah. performer and he's been rewarded and, and quite rightly so with a, with a significant uh, hundred. Mm -hmm. um, and just looking at the scorecard, I don't think this surface is as good as we've seen around the country with a lot of IPL right. uh, matches. Okay. Interesting. Uh, just looking at the way that some balls have behaved, it's not like a flat track 100 off 50 balls type uh, surface. Clarkson's made it look a lot I easier. think Clarkson has made it look a, a lot uh, flatter than what it actually is. Because mm. uh, you just, everyone from Abhishek Sharma, 11 runs off 14 balls, then you've got Tripathi, didn't get going, 15 off 12. Then Markram, you know, again, okay, he hasn't really had any rhythm in, in his batting so far, but he was under 100 in his strike rate. And Harry Brook went out there, and again, mm. uh, you know, he's had his struggles, but he's a world-class, you know, young, exciting player, 27 off 19. So I think, I think Clarkson's innings was a bit of an outlier. Mm. I, I really think that's an excellent total uh, yeah. and even better individual score. Right, let's get into that score then because then it's such a good innings and he's such a high risk player even when those batters you mentioned weren't mm. uh, going he started and that was the tempo with which he played it throughout. You normally see that tempo have an impact for a shorter span of time when it comes off in what was clearly a chanceless innings mm. of 51 balls. What makes him dangerous? Well, it's interesting you say he's a high-risk player. I, I don't consider him a high-risk player because of his shot selection. All right. The reason he has um, the shots available to him, both off the front and back foot, is because he's one of the better players in the current uh, game of using depth of crease. Mm. He does it so well against spin um, where you only have to be a fraction off your length and he can get deep in his crease and he can pull the ball with a vertical bat, not mm. so much a horizontal bat, with a vertical bat sort of from wide mid on around to deep mid wicket. And because he's got so much power and bat speed, yeah. the ball disappears for six. So if you're, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're a world-class spinner or just, a, you know, a, a solid spinner like a Shabazz and a, mm. a, a Karan Sharma, they're fearing for, for their life at the mm. top of their mark thing, if I know if I slightly get this too short, he's so quick to be able to get back and hit it for six, or if I go too full, and the margin of error mm. for a Klaassen is probably two foot, yeah. where for most other batters, it's four, foot, four feet. Mm. So that's, that's the difference he presents as a batter. I'm curious you make that point about Klaassen's footwork, uh, given you tend to associate tall batters who have power mm. to stand and react and hit. And if you think of the batters that come to mind, whether it's a Pollard or a Tim mm. David, Klassen seems to move more. He seems to sort of use his feet more. Is he one of those tall batters in what usually is a, an average height batter's mold? I think, yeah, I think he, uh, mate, the point of difference that he has against a lot of those other tall batters you're referring to is his back foot game. Mm. So he, he manages to hit the ball from deep in his crease and still be able to clear the ropes with that straight, you know, that vertical bat that I was talking about, where your Pollards and your, and your, your Tim Davids, you quite rightly say that, you know, they just will power the ball off the front foot with mm. their momentum going forward. They can still hit sixes off their back sure. foot, but not as frequently as this guy. This guy mm. has a unique skill. Um, he also can hit powerfully through the offside, but sort of magnificent six off Karan Sharma of extra cover. Mm. You know, that's a classy shot. That's yeah. not... That's not just an average batsman. Mm. That is, that's a seriously high-skilled batsman that's got that shot yep. along with all the other stuff that he can present.
What does it tell you about a player who has had a purple patch and such a rich run of form in a team that has struggled so much otherwise? Um, it tells you, firstly, he's come into the tournament in very good form, uh, but he's had a very good two years. And he's a late, mature uh, class, and is that he hasn't really been in the South African setup or regular in that setup for, um, for many years. But for many years, you know, he's 31, I think, years old. Mm. You think, well, hang on a sec here, where's this guy been? Yeah. But he's been a late blossomer, and now he's in the, I suppose, the peak of his powers. And the next, you know, four years for him are, are going to be a, you know, a lot of fun. A number of us raised our eyebrows during the auction. I think we were also looking at, you know, okay, why have Sunrise has gone 525 for Heinrich Klaas? And amongst all the things that they've got wrong, is this mm. one thing they'd say, yep, oh, that's pretty good buy? Without a doubt, they, they recognised, and it was no secret that he's a very good player of spin. Mm. Um, uh, so, you know, they, they bought him primarily as a middle order finisher that's a very good player of spin. Um, the replacement for uh, Puran was Brook. Yes. Uh, where Clarkson was identified, I think, as a specialist spin hitter. Uh, he replaced Kane Williamson. So you can see the logic there. What, what, just imagine if they held on to Puran mm. and had Klaassen as well mm. in that middle. Yeah. Uh, you, you could have, you either could have kept uh, Wicket, and they're both very good fielders. So sure. you, you know, it would give you the left-hander as well and two very dynamic uh, players of spin. Mm. All right. Well, that is a Klaassen special, and Tom Moody is perhaps looking forward to being in the company of Heinrich Klassen very soon? Yeah, he'll be playing in England in the 100 in the, for the Oval Invincibles, so uh, it's nice to see he's in a bit of touch. I'm guessing you won't need to do much with him, just tell him. <laughs> go out and hit it. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> just make sure he gets out there. <laughs> <laughs> very well. Let's look at what worked for RCB, though. And Mohamed Shirat started and ended this innings particularly well. One for 17 of his four. If they do get over the line, they'll look at Siraj's final over. We've seen momentum shift so often, Tom, in the final over of a T20 innings. But mm. Siraj seems to be a league above the rest. And we spoke of him going into this game pre-match with a slightly concerning patch of form. Yeah, look, he again showed his class. And I think, again, that sort of highlights the point. If you've got um, you know, high skill and you execute it, you can bowl well on this surface. There's enough in the surface there. With subtle changes of pace, hitting the right length and line, you, you can bowl well. I thought Wayne Parnell also bowled well, mm. even though he's wicketless, but still he, uh, you know, he bowled his four overs for 35 in a, in a reasonably high-scoring game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I think Sunrisers are very much in this contest. They're slightly over par. We know mm. that RCB have got the artillery, but if you, if you can take a wicket or two within that first six to mm. eight overs... Um, you're putting him under pressure with a total like that. Mm. Very handy couple of overs from Michael Bracewell, you think. Two mm. overs, two for 13. And I guess with in the aftermath of what happened with Abhishek Sharma and Puran in the last game here, and we've seen two overs of spin in the last five, which clearly were the targeted overs mm. by the batters. Do you sense there's, this tells us something about how captains ought to use spin as we approach? I don't know if it's only specific to this ground, mm. but I'm wondering if Faf could have left himself with an over less of spin in the last five. I don't think he was planning on Klaassen being there as long as he was. <laughs> I think that's the, that's the issue when you're in that dilemma as a captain. Yeah. You sort of look at your options, and if Klaassen was dismissed, you then can fit in that over a spin that you're referring to. But whilst he was still in, uh, it's a very dangerous ploy to be yeah. th throwing the ball to one of your spinners when he knows mm. that you know, there's three sixes on the offering, mm. at least. All right. Well, six overs and 83 runs conceded between Shabazz and Karan Sharma. Two good overs of Michael Bracewell at a very different phase of that innings. Let's have a look at the Sunrisers team quickly and now ask the question of whether Mayung Markande is a likelier impact sub or is it going to be T. Natarajan? Well, they might surprise us and throw in someone else that we don't know. But for now, Tom, if you were to make that call. I think it's Natarajan. I think you get your best offensive bowler. Mm. It's clearly, you know... Um, a side that's going to have to go hard to chase those runs down. So the experience of Nataraj and the skill that he has uh, in bowling at the, at the back end in particular uh, will, be, uh, will be valuable. New ball, normally Marco Janssen does that job along yeah. with Bhuvaneshwar Kumar. But looking at that team, I mean, is Karthik Tyagi suddenly going to be an attacking new ball option? Because he's had different mm. roles in his short and sporadic T20 career. 
Boovey for sure is going to take yeah. the first over and the, and the third over. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Mark Crimble the second over mm. um, uh, just so they can get through that power play and, and I would need, they, they probably don't want to expose uh, Tiagi so early on with the second over so yeah. maybe push his first over later in the power play. What's the tempo you expect from Virat Kohli in what is such an important game now and a steep chase? Mm. Uh, we know Faf plays in a in a more enforcing way, but are you expecting him to bat through the innings and take it deep because of what's at stake in a chase here? Are you expecting him to go hard along with that? I think their formula uh, will be the same as the template that they've set so far in this IPL where they've both gone hard in the power play. Uh, if anything's in RCB's favour is that Virat's one of the best chasers in the game. Yeah. So he's got a target now. Uh, if he plays the way he has played so far this year in that power play, he can then recalibrate, okay, what is it we need to do? And there's no one does it better. You know, mm -hmm. he's got a remarkable sort of chasing record. So I'd expect them both to go hard and uh, put Sunrisers under pressure early. Mm. All right. Well, we'll have to see. It's a new look, Sunrisers bowling. Remember, Mayang Dagar, we haven't seen a lot of him. Karthik Tiagi has just had the one game. And maybe Nitish Reddy will also get uh, an over or two on debut. We'll see how they use their bowlers. It's been a big point of discussion in the last home game that the Sunrisers played. Let's get a final prediction. Tom Moody said pre-match he expects the Sunrisers to cause the upset and beat RCB and his prediction is looking good at halftime. You sticking with that? I'm holding. Mm, very well. We see where the game stands with Tom Moody and Sanjay Manjrekar will be in the house as well. Join us then on Visit Saturday Presents ESPN Quick and Footy 20 Timeout. Check out the mobile app. It will have you covered for the rest of the game and all the news as uh, things hot up into uh, the race for the playoffs of the last set of games that start tomorrow. First, we'll see if RCB have given them a real chance with the two points if they are to get over the line today.